session of a Saturday afternoon here at the Institute of General Semantics Symposium for 2023. My name is uh, Tom Cettarelli. Uh, I am the moderator of this uh, panel, and uh, it has the interesting title, Saving the Appearances. I guess mine is beyond prepare, but uh, for our presenters, um, they are all uh, handsome, beautiful, and uh, will give you your money's worth for the rest of this afternoon. And so the first speaker is uh, our translation award winner, Omar Radese from Stony Brook University. And the title of his presentation is Decoding Hispano-Moroccan Conflicts, a General Semantics Analysis. Omar. Hi everyone, thank you Tom for the presentation. I appreciate being here at the time. I'm so happy to uh, exchange with you some of the ideas that interest me from my uh, research point of view and also from my background point of view. So my name is Omar, I'm from Morocco actually. I am a, a graduate student at Stony Brook University. And in my research, I'm interested in like analyzing the relationship between Spain and Morocco through various channels. And, and I found the general semantics system really interesting because it gives me this opportunity uh, to analyze pictures from a semiotic point of view and also to apply other levels of analysis. So, just I'd love to ask you and engage a little bit with you. Have you been in Morocco before? Raise your hand, please. Oh, great. Nice. And have you been in Spain before? Okay, great. I wasn't expecting this. And I don't know if you have noticed or not, between Spain and Morocco, there's like an interesting uh, relationship. Very historical, very emotional, and it's like a love-hate relationship. And sometimes that kind of relationship, it's witnessed and it's also expressed in uh, culture, pop or pop culture, or, or in the media or in the literature. So today I wanted to choose a context of that representation through wars. And I wanted to start with the first war between Spain and Morocco, and it happens during 1860, okay? And starting from a picture, I wanted to ask you, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see this picture? It's a great reference, the Don Quixote, a very famous uh, fictional character in the history of Spanish literature, and this is similar to the Con, Con Quixote, but this is a, a thief. And there's a very famous literature in Spanish, the Cantar de Mio Cid. But interestingly enough, the name itself of a thief is Arabic, it comes from a seed. Just to see how complex Spain and Morocco, especially, is very intricate. And the most interesting thing to me in this is that, to me in this, is that. The first war between Spain and Morocco was used based on some folkloric images of the past. And I wanted to apply the notion of dating in general semantics. So first of all, the title said, Le site se met aussi en campagne pour aller combattre les morts. This figure sit, set out again for war to fight against the Moors. And this uh, satiric uh, picture was used to show like how the Spanish discourse during 1860 was so influenced by pictures of the past history, chivalry, of honor of Spanish, uh, like uh, heroes of the Reconquest, especially the Reconquista, to show how these images can be used to stimulate the population, especially to go to colonize North Morocco from a dating perspective, but we learned from general semantics methodology and system 
that's Morocco or Spain of the 11th century, it's not Morocco of the 19th century, for example, right? A figure represents a heroic, heroic figure that belongs to the 18th century in Spain, for example. And one of his military famous uh, accomplishments was the reconquest of Valencia in South Spain, where there was a lot of bigger community of Moriscos, who are like Arabic descendants or Muslim Spaniards. So that was my first point that I wanted to apply through dating. The second one, this picture is from a series called Tiempos de Guerra, or the English uh, translation was Morocco, uh, Love in Times of War. And it's basically about a story of a group of female nurses who were sent to Morocco to help uh, wound and help the soldiers in their colonial enterprise in Morocco during 1920, uh, right? So we're talking about 20th century in North Morocco. So first of all, I wanted to ask you, what do you understand by this uh, paragraph? Because it was written during Syria by a journalist who was like covering what's going on in that war. So give yourself some seconds and read and see how you can read this, especially if you have no idea about who are the Griffins, who is Morocco, and who are these guys. Well, to me, it was like, how real is real, if we are talking from a general semantic point of view. First of all, the language. We are, use, we are seeing here a use and misuse of language, right? And it shows uh, what's going on within the Spanish colonial scam, right? First of all, if we break it down, the first line is a little bit talking because they are automatically representing the Riffians who are the native North uh, inhabitants of North Africa who were resistant Spanish colonialism. They are already portraying them as with an A, you know, because they are resisting colonialism and it's their legal fight. And again, it's a very dichotomy uh, kind of language to resist or die, right? So there's no options. And then there's also an assumption about the people of Melilla. And Melilla is a Moroccan city in North Africa, but it's still occupied by Spain. So all this language is an interesting thing to analyze together to see what's going on within this discourse of nationalism, of Spanish colonialism and justification of this colonial enterprise in Morocco. And also the most important thing is that at the end of the series, they portray the, this uh, group of nurses as angels over the reef. And the reef is this region in North Morocco whose uh, people were like, fighting uh, against uh, Spanish colonialism. And there were uh, unfortunately a lot of like mustard and chemical bombs, etc. Obviously, the theory doesn't represent that. The theory doesn't represent that because it, it tends to present a different map, right? A map, map right? A map that works for the Spanish national discourse. Another example of this kind of language and also this kind of uh, map and or is uh, to speak from um, a uh, general semantic uh, words intentional language right so we set emphasis on representing morocco as an exotic place as usual because it's exotism it's orientalism the represented the representations of the Rifias or berbers right those in native inhabitants are almost nameless it's not important to name them they wear differently, etc. They don't uh, engage so much in civil life or civil society, etc. And importantly, this series also trying to play with uh, some of the desires of the Spanish colonial discourse, especially the one that is very deep in the imaginary of Spain uh, history. For example, we have a character called Larbi of Arabi in Arabic, and he represents the good Moor. If you go to Diccionario de la Real Academia Española, which is the official dictionary of the Spanish language, and you write Moor, 
It will be interesting how many type of words you will see talking our language. One of those definitions is a Moor is someone who is super jealous, for example, <laughs> or someone who is not baptized, etc. Larvi represents the good Moor because there's also another meaning of a Moor. There's also a Moor, Moro de Paz, Moor of Peace. Why he's a Moor of Peace? Because he shows predisposition to, to co cooperate with the Spanish forces. That's why he's a good Moor. He is even ready to insult people from his own tribes and to show them as you guys don't show gratification or you are ungrateful to the civilization mission of Spain. So this is a this is a character. This character is really uh, shows how language can be used or misused to serve a specific agenda from a culture pop or from a narrative perspective. We see him, for example, fighting against his own cousin because his own cousin see him as a traitor of his people, and he see him as sees him as a, an enemy because he doesn't cooperate with the Spaniards. And again, through this kind of repetitive language, we see also a reproduction of the stereotypical Moor who is like savage, who is like blood, bloodthirsty, etc., who is also very um, uh, inclined to violence through some characterizations and also the actions. More importantly, the Moor always has a special place in the Spanish imaginary because it's a dynamic between attraction and rejection. So when you are talking about maurophobia, you are talking about rejection. When we are talking about maurophilia, it's the sympathy and admiration of the other Moor, especially in, in literature. And Larry is one of those characters who shows this language. But again, we are playing within the Spanish colonial mental map. And this map doesn't represent really the territory of Morocco. Another stereotype of Larry is proselytism. So he's trying also to invite uh, his lover, Magdalena, to convert, for example, to the religion. And for example, uh, making her, uh, he showed also like his possessive, let's say, characterizations. And obviously the series celebrates his inclusion to the Spanish party through his conversion. And we see the conversion also from a seniority point of view. He's dressing in a Spanish military uniform as well. And again, more anxieties about that attraction and how Spanish colonial discourse negotiates constantly the identity of the Spanish versus the Moorish aspect of Spain through also intimate relationships. And the most important thing, in my opinion, is about the series is the virtue signaling or the, uh, the ease of projection, if we are talking from a general semantic point of view. So this guy here downstairs is Abdul Krim al Khattabi. So basically, this was the most famous leader in North Africa to fight to fight against France and Spain, right? And within the Spanish discourse, they are and also this theory, like they applied ease of projection on him to show him to show that he is like the rich one, or he personificates like evilness. In the Siri, they call him el mal nacido, or the rich one, just to show him as the most famous wanted enemy of Spain. Why? Because he's resistant colonialism. And more of this kind of language, or mental maps, which is not inaccurate, I wanted to establish a comparison. To the right, some of the sentences that were said to Larry in relationship to his relation with Magdalena was seen as an impossible thing, that a Moor will have a relationship with Spanish. And to the left, I wanted to put you guys in context because this was one of the paper dolls circulated during the 1920, the same context of this war, for kids in Spain. So kids, we used to play with this, and as it said, as you guys see, it portrays like a little girl with 
uh, clothes of the uh, legionarios or the, the military band, and also the representation of the Rifians or, or North Africans as black, as inferior, as you name it. So the language is there. Just to show the mental map of the Spanish colonial discourse, it doesn't represent the reality and it's very derogatory towards minority communities in North Africa. And just to zoom in and to finish, this is just of the images that I wanted to show and raise awareness about how language can be dangerous sometimes. And as linguistic, we like to be aware of this and spread the word about it. Thank you so much.